I talk about growing that one particular tree that you love out of all of your trees. That one. Yes, this one. And you'll know a fruit tree by the fruit that it bears. Now this particular tree, since day one, literally grew straight up. There's no sway, left or right. Straight up. And I've pruned it. I've done everything that the word calls me to do. And you know what? It's a good fruit tree because it bears good fruit. Now we can already assume what type of tree this is. The fact that it grew so fast, so robust, but so healthy at the same time, it didn't happen on its own. I had to nurture the soil. You see, the soil is the soul of the ground, the soul of the ground. And once you nourish the soul of the ground and sow righteous seeds in the soil, a.k.a. soul, you, in other words, or other, uh, well, let's just put it this way. You get healthy roots. Forget about that. Focus on this. Because like anything in this world, whether you believe in a higher power, whether you're spiritual or whether you're not, we all come from the dirt, the soul of the ground, the earth. Having a foundation that is built on solid ground is very important and the roots must be established. That must be your foundation. When you build the roots, the trunk and the branches will bear good fruit. It is 2023 and this tree looks good every day, every month, every year. So many people have asked me time and time again, why the raised beds? Or why did I put my tree in a box? And why don't I grow in the ground? Truth be told, these roots are in the ground. This box gave it some elevation to help with drainage. Not everybody need to do this, but I chose to do it. And that's one of my secrets for growing a fast growing tree. Just ask Backyard Gardener. Look at her trees on her channel and look at how she has her trees planted inside of a raised box. I'm pretty sure there's other gardeners who follow suit when they saw this. Many years ago, when I started telling people, if you want your trees to grow fast, one of the secrets is to put them in a raised box because drainage is very important for fruit trees. Without drainage, you will smother those roots and root rot will set in really fast. Here's another thing. Don't worry about all the grass that grows up. The cardboard's gonna break down at some point. But if you wanna move the grass, the soil is so, look at that, porous, that'll pull the roots right out. But make sure you always have some sort of drip irrigation. I have one here and one here so that the tree soil, the entire soil and root mass gets watered. The girth on this tree, I can no longer put my entire hand around it. Cherry trees do have some disease issues depending on which cultivar you get. But nevertheless, do yourselves a favor. In late winter, around January, take a copper fungicide. You should do this with all your fruit trees, except for guava. Spray the tree down from top to bottom. Remember, there's going to be no leaves on your tree during this time of year. Come the beginning of spring, spray it again. And then when October roll around, autumn, fall, spray it again. You'll never have a problem with pest or disease when it comes to the cherry tree. But you got to keep up on it. One other thing. Make sure you prune your tree in the first two to three years that you've planted it. Because if you don't, 
You're not going to get thick roots and you're not going to get thick branching like this. You want that. And typically you want three to five scalpels. One, two, three, four, five. And from time to time, you'll have to get in here and cut branches like these that grow across from left to right or some that grow straight down or those that shoot straight up. Cut them off as soon as you see them because you want light and air to get in the center of this tree. That's going to allow for good circulation and it's not going to harbor disease and pest. Very important. The fact that this tree is grown in the ground, I don't have to use fertilizer anymore because it's going to dig its roots as deep as it can. And all those leaves right here, I don't sweep them up every year. No, I don't. I allow them to fall down and compost themselves and become nutrients for the soil, the soul of the ground. Remember, you just can't come into this walk and thinking that one line is going to save you. No, it's not going to save your tree either. You've got to nourish the roots. It's very important and you got to continue to do it. Just like with anything in life, the word teaches us to study to show thyself approved. You've got to do the same with your garden. A defiled mouth cannot enter a sacred garden. Otherwise, you'll end up like Adam and Eve being kicked out of it. Now, I know a lot of you may not like this type of talk, and that's okay. I'm not here to hurt anyone, deceive anyone, mislead anyone, or make anyone feel bad. I'm simply trying to encourage you to do better, to be better, because I know you're capable of doing so. The word states that a bitter tree cannot bear good fruit and a good tree cannot better bear bitter fruit. If you're a bitter person, you need to examine yourself because in the end, man may not be able to judge you, but the most high remembers everything. Shalom.